Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a quick and easy way you can have sprites render in front or beyond each other through a simple calculation. So, in this case, uh, I have this movable dog character and this tree, and if the dog is in front of the tree, I want it to render in front of that tree. You can see that as the sprites overlap, the dog gets shown on front, but if I go behind the tree, then the tree will show in front. So that's a pretty cool effect you can get, and it's not too complicated in order to get. Um, if I go take a look at one of the inspectors for these game objects, you'll notice in the sprite renderer that there is an ordering layer that's set to something other than zero. So by changing the order in layer, we can change which one will show in front of the other. So you also notice as I move around that order in layer changes. and that changing as I move in the Y direction is what allows the game to figure out which object should show in front. So over here I have the code for controlling that sorting order. So in my case I have it as a singleton basically a game manager system. So this is always running and there's only one of it. Um, now if you want to implement this kind of thing you can use the yeah, singleton package but really the only thing we really need to focus on here is that we get all of the sprite renderers in the scene in one way or another. Um, this way, calling it on on update is not very efficient because that means on every single frame we have to go look through all the objects in the scene and find every single one that has a sprite renderer. That said, it does work. In any case, find a way of getting access to all of your sprite renderers. And then for each of the sprite renderers, you have to change the sorting order to some kind of formula. So the important thing isn't exactly what's in this formula, but rather that it is consistent across all of your objects. So in this case, I'm taking the Y position of the transform of every game object that has a sprite renderer, and I multiply that by negative 100 to get the sorting order. The reason why you multiply by a negative number is so that if you're going down on uh, your game and you get to a point where the position is actually under the negative units, so like negative 0.9, that the order in layer is positive because positive numbers will show in front of negative numbers. And if you want the items that are lower, basically they have negative y positions to show in front of the ones that have positive y positions, then you should make it a negative number. Uh, that's the important thing here. I've also seen people do times uh, negative 10, but I like times negative 100 because it gives more um, find control over the order of the objects. Basically, by multiplying it by 100 before you cast it to an integer here, uh, because the sorting order is an integer, you'll get more variety of numbers there and uh, slider moves will have a greater effect on this order. You could even do times a thousand if you really want. But anyway, uh, you just run a calculation and you put that into the sorting order and then whichever items have the highest sorting order value are going to show in front of other items for that layer. Beyond that, the only important thing is that all of these objects that you want to sort with each other should be on the same layer. So if you go over to sorting layer and you add sorting layer, you can create a layer which all of these things are going to show on. So you can see here I have one for objects and I'm also playing around with a sorting layer for shadows and particles, which you might want to always show in front. Um, and the, in terms of these layers, the layer that is at the bottom of the list will always show on top of the other ones. So that's really all you have to do. You have to give it a sorting layer value through script and you need to make sure that all of those objects are on the same layer. And then by doing that, you can have an object go behind a tree, but then at the same time be able to go in front of it as well. So that's going to be it for this video on controlling the renderer sorting order inside of your Unity games. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.